three freshmen in the starting lineup, the freshman of the year in Rosendahl, the player of the year in Kalia Lawrence. One of the matchups to watch are the two bigs uh, for each team. Rachel Self, number 34 for Mercer, and Jasmine Joyner, number three for Chattanooga. Both had a great defensive presence in their semifinals, seven and eight blocks each. Queen Alford, the Jacksonville University transfer who has the ability to get them on track. She does so early. We were speculating about the matchups and whether or not Chattanooga would play a zone because it was so effective against the good shooting of Sanford. Coming out in their man-to-man. -man. Alicia Payne loses Kalia Lawrence around the screen and the player of the year misses her first shot of the day. Defensive player of the year, Alicia Payne matched up against the player of the year. Kalia Lawrence, that'll be the other matchup to watch. Despite being the king of the mountain, so to speak, Chattanooga only has one senior playing. It's Alicia Payne. The mocks have made no secret. This tournament run is about Payne. It's about getting her back to the NCAA tournament, and Queen Alford is shouldering the load early. She has all five points. Queen Alford able to get by her defender, Kalia Lawrence and then scoot under Rachel Self. She had seven blocks the other day, as I mentioned earlier. A good defensive presence, and as long as Chattanooga continues to attack the rim, I think they'll see continued success. Jasmine Joyner affected that shot, although she didn't block it. Joyner had eight blocks in the semifinals. She's three blocks away from tying a tournament record of 14. Means comes over, swipes at the ball, then takes it away. An early whistle rules it a tie-up, and the jump ball goes to the Bears anyway. Jim Foster has taken four teams to the NCAA tournament, the only coach in NCAA history who's done that. He's already a Hall of Famer as well. Third year with this team, trying to take them to the NCAA tournament for the third time in three years. Kalia Lawrence is on track. Kalia Lawrence is going to score, and we saw that she had a tough outing the first day in the tournament since then and she's been on track and been pretty steady it's going to be a tough task for alicia payne to defend her and limit her production kalia lawrence trying to slow down queen alford who dishes to alicia payne chattanooga has started three for three in a six-point lead alicia payne not knowing as a primary not known as a primary scorer she certainly has elevated her game throughout the season and she shows her range there Linnea Rosendahl, the freshman of the year, out of Sweden, a pure shooter, not a great ball handler. Queen Alford racing back the other way. It's a foul and one. The mocks are looking every bit like the reigning champs in a 10-2 start to the game. Uh, and that was Kiana Gilbert who gets out there, gets a hand on it. She's able to outrace Kalia Lawrence and forces the foul there, which is good news for Chattanooga. Anna Gilbert, such an unselfish player, one that just is steady throughout the ball game. We may not say her name often, but she, everything she does affects the entire play. Jim Foster believes she is the best player in the league. He doesn't think there's anybody that's really close, not because of one aspect of her game, the complete game, the scoring, the rebounds, the defensive aspect. And an interesting matchup putting her on Sydney Means. Certainly a height advantage of about six inches and she has the quickness to keep up with means I, I think that's a great matchup and Jim Foster just the master of strategy Sydney means bounced to the baseline by Ariana Gilbert it's Rachel self on the opposite end of the baseline Rachel self has really come into her own especially in this tournament was very impressed with her defensive presence in the semifinals and and here even stepping out and taking some baseline jumpers First shot Chattanooga has missed today. They hit all of their first field goal attempts and the free throw. Means on the hesitation has to kick it back to their super sub. The three-point shooter, Kiki Callaway. Kiki Callaway had 22 points in the quarterfinal. Final, just coming in and making things happen. You'll see that Susie Gardner will go deeper into her bench than Jim Foster. And Callaway and 22, Alex Williams, two of those key subs for Mercer. Joyner, she's got that part of her game now, the mid-range game, although that one's off the mark. 
Susie Gardner is the Southern Conference Coach of the Year for good reason. She has a brand new staff. She's playing seven freshmen who account for 45% of her scoring. And Mercer has set a school record. They've got 24 wins and on the cusp of their first ever NCAA tournament berth. Queen Alford wanting to get into the heart of the defense and changed her mind when she saw Rachel Self looming. Kiana Gilbert went up to bring the pass in and then underneath Sydney Means wins the rebound. Means will push. Means couldn't get it off the fingertips cleanly. And just affected by Kiana Gilbert. Gilbert wisely not trying to block, just get in there enough to distract and affects Means' ability to score. Payne fouled on the drive. That foul is going to go against Sydney Means. So Means with one, Kalia Lawrence with one. Those are two of the key players for Susie Gardner's squad. How good has the career been for Alicia Payne? She's won 110 career games. She has lost 17. A starter for each of the last two years has improved each of the last few years. Second straight Defensive Player of the Year award for Payne. She's just such a scrappy player. She's been a great leader for, again, a young squad. Not quite as young as Mercer's, but being the only senior, you know there's a lot of youthfulness on this Chattanooga team as well. Brittany Broadway traveled with it. Chattanooga doing a great job in the lane. Robin, it was one of your keys, contain the drive in the dish. And they're getting bottled up in the lane. They are, and, and that's bodes very well for Jim Foster's group. Part of the offense for Mercer is to get into the paint, draw the def op weak side defense, draw some help, and then find that open scorer. If they can't get in there and the primary defender puts the stop on, everybody else clamps down. Payne hesitates. She had a lane. Instead, she kicks to Kiana Gilbert. Another three for the Mox. They've hit three of them here in the early stages. Well, how about the decision making of Alicia Payne? That was a great decision. She could have gotten in there. That She was among a lot of defensive congestion. Gilbert floating into her vision, wide open for the three. The new kids on the block in search of their first NCAA tournament bid have taken a punch early. Kiki Calloway trying to settle him down with the three, but the Mox had the answer and have the early lead.
have won 10 of their last 11 games. The only loss during that stretch was at Chattanooga when the Mox avenged an earlier loss to the Bears. And the way the Mox won that game, Alicia Payne locked down Kalia Lawrence, who only had eight points in that game. And they held the Bears to just 45 points, which has been the key to Chattanooga's run, not just down the stretch in this 10 straight wins, but throughout the year. They've got the 12th best scoring defense in the country, and it's been at its best these last four or five games. And we had seen that Mercer's defense throughout the tournament had been in primarily a zone, sagging in, really bottling things up. And it's interesting to me that they are in a man-to-man -man against this Chattanooga team that is so good at ball movement and so fundamentally sound in finding ways to get to the open player of the ball. And even switching to the man, they still have an open three-point shooter. Ariana Gilbert, the fourth different mock to score. Good ball movement by Chattanooga. They're very patient in their offense. Using the screens to force switches on the defense. There's a, a block shot by Gilbert. Inside 10 to shoot for the sophomore guard, Sydney Means. Now Kalia Lawrence has the Defensive Player of the Year honor, swiping at the ball. Lawrence doesn't get the roll, and Payne has the rebound. Alford, a pull-up over Lawrence, and Self has it for the Bears. Alford trying to get some rhythm going, get some tempo going, maybe push Mercer into a speed that they aren't comfortable with, but shot doesn't go down and gives Sydney Means an opportunity to reset her group. Lawrence on the curl, mishandled the pass. Chattanooga has made Mercer pay for all of its turnovers to this point. In the semifinal game, we saw Jasmine Joyner hit those shots just inside the arc. As you had mentioned, Darren, she has been able to extend her, her range and improve her skill sets. And this time on the attack, Kiki Calloway going right at Joyner. Joyner's the only mock who hasn't scored. Kiki Calloway now leads the Bears with five. You gotta honor the three, so she drives in on Alford. And Alford just giving her that step to the inside, a little slow in her recovery. Part of the all-freshman team, Kiki Calloway. In their opening round win against UNCG, Kalia Lawrence was in foul trouble, never found her rhythm. Kiki Calloway came off the bench and was outstanding. And they continue to go to her early, and she continues to provide them with points. And just such a good squad of freshmen. They fulfill their different roles perfectly, and one of the roles Kiki Calloway is creates that perimeter scoring for Mercer. Gilbert over Alex Williams, down low to Jasmine Joyner, and now all five starters for the Mox have scored. They haven't gone to their bench yet. Jasmine Joyner sneaking under Rachel Self to get that misfire. And it's just so much poise in Joyner. She's not rattled by this competition, by this level, of where they are in this tournament. Alex Williams, they're going to count it. She narrowly avoids traveling, then just tosses it up with the left hand. As she was able to back. Ariana Gilbert in, and then Gilbert with some contact at the very end there. A little flick shot, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. While the mocks haven't gone to their bench yet, although they just did bring in Moses Johnson, the Mercer bench has outscored their starters. Uh, Moses Johnson, if, if Jim Foster's going to get into his bench, she's the one that will come in. Beyond her, we may not see any other of the box. Just depends on how the, the team's playing and what kind of punch they need. They bunch up there. Queen Alford got into her. Up ahead, it's Kalia Lawrence who misses the layup and then commits the foul. Two fouls on the player of the year. We saw Kalia Lawrence in the first game of this tournament, the quarterfinals, who got into foul trouble early in the game and became a big factor. You see the miss, too much 
much energy and then just trying to get back into the play inadvertently collides with the rebounder and now Lawrence going to the bench. Again, a kind of a rough start for the player of the year. All year long, the Bears' motto hasn't been about let's win the next one. It's been about did we get better today? How can we get better today? And after winning the quarterfinal, Susie Gardner said, you know what we learned today? We can win when our best player has her worst game. And, and I imagine learning that early in this tournament takes some of the pressure off. It's a relief. You've got players like Kiki Calloway continuing to try to drive to the basket. Rachel Self, good defensive play on the other end of the floor, getting around Joyner, knocking the ball out. Defense collapsed on Payne, and a foul going against the Mox. It is on Moses Johnson. Rachel Self very active. She knows that she's really going to have to be physical. She's going to have to bang in order to maintain her position. And so far, she's been doing a good job of keeping things going for Mercer. Kiana Gilbert so far has done a wonderful job limiting the penetration of Means. And then she lost her there. First bucket for Means. Up until that point. And, and that congestion using two screens at the top. Gilbert just lost track of Means. And unless you're going to step out and hedge and force her to back away from the lane, if she gets a foot in it, she's going to keep going. Now it's Joyner for three. She's taken three mid-range or deeper shots. And the Bears can have the final shot of the quarter. But Payne slaps it free from Callaway. That's what Alicia Payne will give you. Chattanooga started the quarter hitting their first four shots. They end the quarter three for their last 11. But it's an eight-point lead for the Mox in search of their fourth consecutive Southern Conference Tournament Championship. They've got a lead after 10 minutes. Chattanooga is hitting on all cylinders. All five of their starters have scored, and they've hit four threes. That's as many as they average per game. 
four threes from four different players. Shows the challenge of defending this Chattanooga team. And I've said in the past in watching these Jim Foster teams in Chattanooga over the years, you pick your poison. Are you going to pack it down in and stop the bigs from getting hot? Or are you going to get out, cover the long range, and give up the inside? Chattanooga gives up just 53 points a game. If they're pouring in threes and shooting around 50%, it is going to be mighty tough to beat the Mox. Let's see how much Mercer has in the tank today. And that player in particular certainly helps the cause. Just doing the same thing she did in the first game of the tournament, lining up, finding those threes when Kalia Lawrence went out with foul trouble. Eight points now for Kiki Calloway, and right after that, Jim Foster went back to his bench and said, Moses, get right over there to the scorer's table. And they have to step up and find her. She's a shooter, and she wants to get those shots off long. Jasmine Joyner's been really aggressive here to start this game with the mid-range shot, not as much on the inside. That's the first mid-range shot she's hit. Uh, as soon as that quarter ended, Jim Foster called her over, and he was talking specifically to her and trying to help her calm down. You know, what are the good shots she needs to take? Where are her shots? Comes out firing. Williams with the putback and the foul. It all started with the penetration of Means. That's that drive and dish key. Talking about if Sydney Means can get to the basket, her she'll get a shot up, and then. A great follow by Williams. She's been an outstanding rebounder throughout the season. She just provides that extra positive energy on second shot opportunities. Williams and Callaway have sparked his Mercer bench. 13 of the 19 Bears points have come off the bench. Gilbert with a step back now over Broadway. That was halfway down. Williams saves it back into Broadway. Give credit to Rachel Self again, big 6'3 girl for Mercer. She's affecting the rebounding of Jasmine Joyner. She's really fighting in there to get her hands on those shots, preventing second opportunities for Chattanooga. With Johnson in the game, she's the one checking Kiki Calloway. Means just looking for a hole to drive through. They're late in the shot clock now. She finds it with the left hand, but doesn't hit the rim. Those are the balls that have been falling down all tournament for Means. And it's interesting that Kiana Gilbert's actually letting Means get by her a little bit, trying to get maybe a piece of the ball from behind. Means a little strong on that particular shot. Alicia Payne, another three for Red Payne. That's her second of the day. There's your senior. Certainly, there's no doubt that she wants to go out with a yet another tournament victory. She's averaged more than 11 points a game in the two games in this tournament. Johnson goes flying by on the Callaway drive. So Johnson, who came in to check Callaway, gives up a bucket. She's got 10. Kiki Callaway, 22 in the quarterfinal. Certainly well on her way to matching that. She is the single offense for this Mercer squad at this point in the game. Chattanooga held a 12-point lead. They've led throughout. Mercer's never even been tied. Mox came out of the gates on fire. They hit their first four shots. Joyner secures the rebound. Gilbert. There it is again. Six threes for the Mox. That's just not on the scouting report for any opponent. Oh, it Another Great assist shooting. for Alicia Payne. Great shooting.
the player of the year for the Mercer Bears, Kalia Lawrence, on the bench in foul trouble. Similar story to their first round game. She's played eight minutes. She has two points. I don't think that's the biggest factor in this game, though. Jim Foster's team has hit six threes, and they're neutralizing any run the Bears threaten to go on. They have been shooting lights out from the floor. 50% for the game, 60% so far in this quarter. And perfect from the free throw line. Five assists. I mean, just the team play that you would expect out of a Chattanooga team that's so experienced come postseason. Hard to find an opening. Williams does, sliding around her man. Couldn't secure the rebound. It's over to the Mox. Chattanooga just doing a good job of trying to force the drive outside. They've been great at not fouling. They are one of the best programs in the nation in terms of low fouls. In fact, they're number one. You can't get a whole lot better than that. Not many more. <laughs> Alicia Payne, who had hit her first few. It's an offensive rebound from Moses Johnson. And Payne just taking her time to reset an offense. It, not trying to rush, not trying to force up another long-range shot. Moses Johnson will, though. Right over Kayla Potts. Alford was out of bounds. Moses Johnson, not the, probably the one you want taking a lot of those three-point shots. Just a 23% three-point shooter. Rosendahl doesn't have a point yet, the freshman of the year. Kiana Gilbert has done a great job on Sydney Means. Only once has Means had a good look after getting around her. And then she switches off here on Potts and affects that shot. Well, as Jim Foster said, he thinks she's the best in the league. Defensively, she can take almost anybody. Great dish underneath by Moses Johnson. Jasmine Joyner traveling with it. Sydney Means was slapping at the ball. Gotten ahead of Jasmine Joyner a little bit. Sydney Means, so small in stature, is able to get under those post players, either tie them up or affect their ability to hang on to the ball, and she did it just there. Kalia Lawrence has come back into the game here for the Bears. Five minutes to go in the half. Just two points for Lawrence because of two fouls. Williams fronts Johnson, goes into Joyner in the double team. Now she's down to the floor to scoop up the loose ball, and the jump ball favors the Mox. Kiana Gilbert diving in the pack, ripping that ball away. Mox have won or shared each of the last four regular season championships in the league. They've won the last three tournament titles, and they have won 16 Southern Conference tournament championships. Johnson turns it down to Joyner. Working in against Self, she affects that one. Gilbert has it knocked out of bounds. Sydney Means pushed it across the baseline with six on the shot clock. Self has a very long reach. Her ability to block shots has improved throughout the season, if not throughout the tournament. I believe those seven blocks she had two days ago certainly have boosted her confidence and her ability to defend at the rim. Chattanooga has now missed its last six shots. They're leaving the door open a little bit here for a Mercer run. Defensively, though, they're locking down. The Bears can't get a clean look. Bears haven't scored in more than three minutes as Chattanooga has gone cold. Joyner had to help out in the lane. Self had a good look, then Williams had it knocked down to the floor. Williams. Alone, white jersey in there. It did a great job of going up to get the ball, but was knocked out from behind as she was coming down. I do like the way Mercer's been playing their defense. Very aggressive. Effectively taking away the interior play for Chattanooga. Forcing Jasmine Joyner to really have to work to even gain position. Alford trying to create late in the shot clock. She's the one who can. An off-balance shot from the angle. Here comes Mercer on the run. Callaway going right at Alicia Payne. Alicia Payne's not going to foul you. She knows how to defend, even in transition. She can get a hand on the ball, but affect your shot. This one is deep. She was almost on the sideline. In fact, she was. 
Alford had a heel on the sideline, turns it over. And unfortunately for Alford, that one did go in. Here's another look. Just so far out, so wide, so deep, and right there. And look at her finish. It's all the rim, and it goes in. Lawson Newton was right there on the call. So now the Mocs haven't scored in about four minutes. It's pushing up on five for the Bears. <laughs> Kalia Lawrence trying to track down her rebound. She does as she flies into the Chattanooga bench. Williams with a strong jump stop. It's slapped free inside by Payne. Defense has started to take over this game. Both ends. De good defensive transition by Mercer. And again, getting in deep. This time, Alford able to get underneath. And currently, Rachel Self, 6'3 freshman on the bench, subbed in Amanda Thompson, who's smaller in stature. And we may see Chattanooga attack that basket more and more with Self out. And she went right at Lawrence, who couldn't commit the foul. Defense sags in on Lawrence. Kiki Calloway has gone cold, as the rest of the team has. They've hit one of their last ten. And now a foul coming behind Alicia Payne. Alex Williams called for it. Alicia Payne on the way down the floor. Just a push off by Williams. Got in too tight next to Payne. Does just a nice job of handling the ball and avoiding the deep defenders. Susie Gardner goes back to her bench to put Kalia Lawrence on it. It was hurting her defense with her out there. And immediately Chattanooga still attacks and goes back to the line. And here comes Lawrence again. Well, trading offense for defense already. Susie Gardner trying to protect her leading scorer. Bring her in for the offensive end whenever there's a dead ball or a free throw situation. I feel like Chattanooga has now turned it up a little bit. Again, recognizing that Rachel Self is out the floor. Lawrence has two fouls, and they are in attack mode. That's when they are so dangerous. The big four. Joyner, Queen Alford, Kiana Gilbert, and Alicia Payne, they've provided 85% of the scoring in the first couple of games of the tournament. They're at it again today. Look, All Payne five starters have scored, yeah. We hadn't often see Sydney Means pick up her dribble so far from action. This time she did, and Alicia Payne shutting down Lawrence. The just tough defensive presence. Offensive rebound for Thompson. Someone's got to come help Means does with Kiana Gilbert in her hip pocket. Johnson rejects Means. It's Thompson again who comes up with it for the Bears. Lawrence down to her knees. A scramble situation. Chattanooga has recovered well defensively. Kiki Calloway for three. Another one for the freshman off the bench. Calloway just spotting up behind the arc all during that crazy scramble for the loose ball. I think Mercer did an excellent job of getting the ball back up and then out to their score. Three threes for Calloway today. She has a team high 13. Nobody else has more than five from Alex Williams. Inside a minute to play here in the opening half. Alicia Payne tied up by Sydney Means and she traveled with it. Sydney Means can get her hand on the ball very quickly. Jim Foster asking about some contact perhaps, but we've seen both these point guards on the defensive end taking the ball away from ball handlers from those that are trying to get to the rim. Means, the mid-range jumper, down to Payne. Shot opportunity here for Chattanooga. Look for them to milk the clock. He's calling for a timeout, Jim Foster. Timeout, Chattanooga. 15 Robbie seconds to go in the Gray. half. Jim Foster will use that timeout. There isn't a whole lot of in-game coaching for Jim Foster. He likes to give his girls the opportunity to create on their own. Here's another look. This 
Nice job of working defensively for Chattanooga. Probably not the best use of the clock for Mercer. They had some time. It's a quick shot, only a couple passes. Mercer's been much more effective when they've been able to continue to move the defense and attack off the dribble and then dish it out and re readjust and reattack. Largest lead of the half for Chattanooga has been 12, two different times. Ah, looking to trap here, trying to prevent any scoring opportunity for Chattanooga. First time the Bears have done this all day. Here comes the steal from Thompson. One second left, does she get it off in time? It would have been good had it fallen. At least that was the initial ruling. But real time, it may have left her hand a little bit late. Nonetheless, the Bears end the half hitting just one of their last 12. Chattanooga went a bit cold as well. But the Mox, the three-time reigning tournament champs, are unbeaten this year with a halftime lead in the first half. Only one for six from the floor, two fouls, turnover. And I'm sure that she was trying to figure out how she's going to create openings and trying to do a little too much. Means will be whistled for the foul here. Part of the struggles of Lawrence, certainly the foul trouble. Alicia Payne deserves credit here. I mean, she forced her into that double team, and she was confused in midair. Yeah, she uh, left her feet. As you see, Gilbert getting down the floor against Means. Means picking up the foul. It's her second. But credit the defense of Alicia Payne. And she just has really stuck to Kalia Lawrence, not giving her any room to work when she gets the ball and making it difficult for her teammates to find her when she's without the ball. Alicia Payne is the only senior on either team. This rivalry that's blossoming here, we're gonna see it for a couple of years. Uh, both teams fairly young in the squad, and again, Kiki Calloway, the Bears' bright spot, knocking down yet another three, now 16 points on the day. Four threes for Kiki Calloway. Alicia Payne isn't known as a shooter, but she did hit a couple in the first half. Mercer playing just inside the arc. Really forcing Chattanooga into a lot of clock use, and that is now another foul on Sydney Means. Again, credit to Alicia Payne. She drives right at her, forces the catalyst of this Mercer offense and their defense into her third foul. And I feel like if Sydney Means gets into significant further foul trouble, that may spell doom for Mercer. Just a feeling, because we, we've just seen how well she's controlled this team. Her presence is vital to their success. Today, she hasn't been able to get the offense into a flow. Kiana Gilbert has locked her down. Even when she's had some openings, she hasn't looked as confident or comfortable as she did the first two games. This Mox defense today, more than living up to a tight. Kalia Lawrence bounces off Alicia Payne, forces one up. Joyner's got another rebound. Alicia Payne just contesting, just sticking a hand out, not necessarily trying to get into Lawrence's jersey, not trying to get those block shots. See that they're Chattanooga now pulling Joyner further from the basket again, trying to draw Rachel Self away. Joyner struggling to connect in that mid-range. Callaway, that'll count. Kiki Callaway, what a game. 18 points for Callaway. Nobody else for the Bears has more than five. And now a chance for another one at the line. Uh, leading the break and, and not hesitating, going all the way to the basket. Kiki Callaway watching her in the semifinal, and she didn't play as many minutes. And there, there was a look of frustration after the game, although Mercer won. So maybe her mindset is, Coach, you put me in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the job done, and she's showing it. A couple of quick whistles here this half. 
Talisa Green underneath gets self here, bodying up against Jasmine Joyner. This self's first. She's done a nice job against Jasmine Joyner of preventing Joyner from getting into a rhythm offensively and also contesting a lot of those boards. Self gives Joyner a little bit of room, and Jasmine Joyner connects for her third field goal of the day. Jasmine Joyner's mid-range shot development has been crucial for her to be able to score. She's not able to get her usual point production in on the block, and stepping away has been beneficial. Lawrence hit the deck. Long rebound comes to Kiana Gilbert, and she'll wait for the mox. Underneath, it's Joyner, and she's hacked hard. Lawrence and Self are both there. If it's Lawrence, that's her third. Looks like they're... First foul, first four, Lawrence. That's her third. They're giving it to, to Lawrence, who came into the play a little late. Now that's Lawrence with three and Means with three. Probably the two players that make this Mercer team go the most. At some point, there has to be a level of frustration for the Bears. They beat the Mox early on in the regular season. It ended the Mox's 52-game conference winning streak. The Mox then lost again in their next game at Samford and haven't lost since, including limiting the Bears to 45 points. That defense, I think it's translating for the Bears to both ends of the floor. They're showing frustrations on both sides. Uh, they have not been able to get their offense going in, in the way that we've seen throughout the tournament, especially Sydney Means attacking the basket. Kalia Lawrence again on the bench with three fouls. And Chattanooga just slowly defeats you mentally, and then they're able to do what they want on the offensive end. Alicia Payne whistled for the foul, cutting off the baseline. Chattanooga has led throughout. They've never relinquished the lead. Bears haven't even been tied. And for the assignments that Alicia Payne has had, that's just her first foul of the ball game. And she's been assigned to defend Means, uh, Lawrence, and Callaway. Now it's Kiana's sister, Ariana, who shuts off Means and forces her back up top. Making Means give up the ball is... She wanted the foul. She wanted the foul. She initiated some contacts. Maybe a little bump there by Ariana Gilbert. No call by the officials. Dancing that baseline. See the little bump, little contact. Gilbert lobs one into Joyner. She collects it with the right hand, then lost the handle of it. And the jump ball will keep the possession on this end of the floor. Joyner just being able to go up and knock that down. That was a difficult pass. Tough one to handle. Had some heat on it. And she's having to gather that in above Amanda Thompson. Alford, a catch and shoot on the inbounds. Alicia Payne went up for it. Now she's being toppled over. Another jump ball, so this one's the Bears. feel like this is a slugfest, Darren. Both teams are trading punches, and neither Chattanooga can't create enough separation to get comfortable, and Mercer can't quite get over the hump in terms of scoring. Second bucket of the day for Means. Her and Lawrence have combined for three of 15. Good thing they've got Kiki Calloway keeping them within arm's distance here. Mercer with a smaller lineup out there, and that, I think, is an advantage for the athletic Gilbert and Joyner. Gilbert was able to fight that ball up. Thompson capped her for a little bit, and she was still able to muscle it up. The bench carrying Mercer like it did in the first round against UNCG, a very different opponent. UNCG winless in the Southern Conference this year, the Mox are the four-time reigning champs and the three-time reigning champs of this tournament. That's a foul on Williams. Queen Alford 
taking the ball away win, recognizing the defense is going to be there to stop and able to split really three defenders and draw the foul at the end. Chattanooga started out with some hot shooting. They are struggling in their own right, getting any consistency on the offensive end. It still gives Mercer this, I, this thought that they are close and they can stay close. In this half, the Mocs, they've only taken four shots. They're getting to the line. Payne denies Kalia Lawrence the ball. Goes to the other wing, Brittany Broadway. Gardner has Means on the bench. She's trying to trade out both Lawrence and Means to keep them in the game. And a nice take by Williams. Alex Williams going against Jasmine Joyner. He commits the foul. It'll be Williams at the line when we get you back in here. Kiki Calloway has been more than a bright spot for the Bears. She's been their shining star here today. In a defensive struggle in the Southern Conference Championship with the winner getting the automatic berth to the NCAA Tournament, two things are beginning to stand out. Both teams neutralizing each other somewhat from the three-point line, so what stands out, the turnovers, both around the same number, seven for Jim Foster's mocks, six for the Bears, but the mocks have turned them into points, and the mocks are getting to the line. They've been there nine more times than the Bears. That's a big factor, and get those shots at the free throw line. Says that you're attacking the basket, you're forcing Mercer defensively on their heels. And in a game where 
Shots are at a premium. Only 10 shots taken between the two teams and five made in this first five minutes of the third quarter. Any opportunities from the free throw line become that much more important. And any extra opportunity, be it a turnover or an offensive rebound like this, got to cash in. Payne draws the assignment to Callaway. Wanted the traveling. That didn't call. Then she knocks it free from Lawrence. Broadway along the baseline. Wow, she's able to shield off Jasmine Joyner. It becomes a three-point possession there for the Bears. Nice take by Broadway. And as you said, Darren, the offensive rebound gives you second chances, second shots. So vital in a game this tight. Flashing a double team here on Queen Alford. Gilbert with a great touch pass down to her sister Ariana. Mercer coming out in a bit of a zone where they're chasing and looking to trap the wings, trap the ball on the side. And that left Ariana Gilbert wide open when the ball was reversed back to the top of the lane. Thompson, a contested jump shot. How many times have we said that today for the Bears? Better question is how many times has there been a non-contested jump shot? Uh, Mercer is struggling from the flaming. They're not a shooting a bad percentage, they're 50% this quarter, but they just haven't been able to generate enough opportunities to make a difference. Mercer back in that man-to-man. -man. Little gamble out of the timeout in the last possession. A tough shot by Queen Alford. Leads to a foul and a joiner free throw attempt coming up. That just a little hard off the glass and Joyner finding a seam between two Mercer Bears to get in there and get the offensive boards. Joyner inching up towards another double-double. She doesn't have a single block today. She had eight of them yesterday to tie hers and the Chattanooga record. She's done it three times this year, four times in her career. It's the fourth time now Chattanooga has led by 12. It's their largest lead. Mercer continuing to hang around. They are within striking distance. They can get some consecutive stops on the defensive end and some Offensive production from this player, the player of the year, Lawrence. Gilbert fouls her, taking the jump shot. The thing about the Bears this year, Susie Gardner is the first to say it. When you ask her how this season came about, a record win total, now at 24. Player of the year, coach of the year with seven freshmen and a new staff. She said the stars aligned. The year started with two overtime wins, so they easily could have been 0-2. They had a buzzer-beating win down at Samford. They had a two-point victory in their last game of the regular season against Furman to secure the number one seed. Uh, playing tight games toughens you up in a hurry. There's a lot of confidence that gets built when you can win those tight games, win those overtime games, and part of this fairy, <coughs> excuse me, this fairy tale for Mercer is those early wins to create confidence and allow this young team to know that they belong here, and rightfully so. I mean, is, again, they're still within striking distance, 10 points. Chattanooga just isn't going to be able to shake them that easily. Alford draws a crowd inside 10 to shoot. Payne finds the skip over to Moses Johnson with Kalia Lawrence flashing out at her. It's out of bounds, last touch by the Mox. Moses Johnson coming in off the bench but struggling. She's had some nice looks. It seems to be a little short on her shot. Maybe not enough lift, not enough follow through. Sydney Means on the bench. Kiki Calloway runs the point. And Calloway pulls up for the shot. Couldn't roll the bounce pass down there because Alford cut it off. Then Alford beats her down the floor. She commits the foul retreating. That's a nice job by Kiki Calloway of preventing the layup. First of all, 25, Kiki Calloway, 
Kiana Gilbert getting out on the push and getting the ball down the floor. Puts Mercer in a difficult situation when Kiki Callaway, as a freshman, she hasn't been the primary point guard. She's being asked to run the offense, and that also takes her out of that position of being a scorer because she's having to first think, who do I get it to? And then secondly, think about her shot. Chattanooga has nine more points at the line than the Bears. Leads it by 11. It's another aspect of Chattanooga's game that Robin touched on. They don't commit any fouls. Fewest fouls per game in the country. There's one on Joyner. It'll put Self at the line. Joyner to block the 6-3 Rachel Self is a challenge and Joyner giving it a gallant effort. And Self definitely coming into her own throughout this season and being a a force to be reckoned with on the inside, both offensively and defensively. Seven blocks, nearly a double-double in the semifinal, just missing in blocks and rebounds. And Susie Gardner said she's wanted her to be more aggressive. She hasn't been aggressive enough all year. And she saw signs of that for her freshman, part of the all-freshman team, in the semifinal win. Knocks down two. Getting interesting, that nine extra free throws made by Chattanooga is the difference in the score right now. Alford from the free throw line, there it is. 11 points now for Alford, third player for the Mox into double figures. Sydney Means back on the floor. Again, to run the show, remember she has three fouls, as does Kalia Lawrence, number 24. She's trying to clear out some space, this means. Kiana Gilbert stays in front of her. She finally gets around Gilbert, strong from the angle. We saw a little head and shoulder fake by Sydney Bean does get Gilbert to bite on it and is able to get around her. Yes, in the semifinals, all those shots fell. And in the first round. And she scored more in the semis when she matched her career best. Payne always looking to assist first. A tough pass through defenders to Jasmine Joyner. How about the recognition of Payne? She can get past Means, who's in foul trouble. That forces Rachel Self to come over and help. And she just thread that needle through there to her post player, Joyner. Moses Johnson fell down. That left Broadway open at the top. Joyner fights it down to the floor. Self rips it away and throws it away to Johnson. Knocked free by Broadway. Who's it off of? Broadway is the answer. Yeah. Got Dawn Marsh right here on the side. She can see it as we could. Pretty clear angle all the way down. See the, the scrum for the ball. Couldn't really see through Lawson Newton there, the official, the low official. Mox can hold for the last shot of the quarter. And the foul will put him right back at the line. Two on self. Rachel Self and Jasmine Joyner have been battling throughout this game on the block. Joyner the junior trying to remind Self that she is her elder and, and getting a little bit of the better of her in a lot of these instances. It's a good point. While there are lots of juniors, sophomores, freshmen out there, for Mercer it's largely freshmen and sophomores. There are more upperclassmen for Chattanooga, even though they're only losing Alicia Payne, their only senior. They do have far more veterans out there. Gilbert's a sophomore. Ariana Gilbert is a redshirt sophomore, having missed a year with an injury. Sydney Means at the buzzer. Bears needed a little bit of positive momentum. And maybe that one from their sophomore guard can carry into the final 10 minutes. 
It draws them within 11, looking for their first NCAA tournament berth in program history. Susie Gardner, the Southern Conference Coach of the Year, trying to find some answers. Been an entertaining start here to the Southern Conference Tournament Championship game. Three quarters in the books. Mox have led throughout. Bears have pushed them at times, but they just can't find the consistency. They found magic throughout the season. They might need to find one more magic bullet here. Uh, this quarter, you pull out all the stops. You've got your best squad on the floor, your Mercer. Kiki Calloway, who has 18 points. You have Sydney Means and Leah Lawrence, who are the key factors of making this thing go. Shot clock never started here. Lawson Newton all over it. Jim Foster said of his team after the semifinal win, he thought in the third quarter against Samford, they played not to lose. They had a big lead, it went away. Samford actually grabbed the lead. Then they played like they wanted to win in the fourth quarter. Here the fourth quarter starts with Means hitting a shot. Back to back buckets now for Means for the first time today. Uh, Mercer coming out in a 1-3-1 and they're looking to trap. They're trying to force turnovers here. Lawrence in the air getting deflections. She got a deflection which led to the Means layup. Only a sophomore here, Kiana Gilbert showing poise, a dangerous pass, and then she comes crashing into the table. Mercer wins it up ahead to Kalia Lawrence for the lay-in. Look for Jim Foster to take a timeout here, and he does. Good to see Kiana Gilbert's okay. That was a pretty hard hit into the table. Two turnovers for Foster's Mox here to start the fourth quarter. And they've both led to points. 
That's something Chattanooga was able to do in the first three quarters, but the Bears were unable to pull off. They may be the top seed, but they're certainly the underdog here today, turning things around to start the fourth quarter. Uh, coming out in a different defensive look, very active hands over the top, and as much as Chattanooga's trying to break that zone down, they haven't been able to get it past the first line of defense, and Mercer taking full advantage of it, using their foot speed and their active defensive hands for two quick buckets. Who's the pressure on here, Robin? I feel like the pressure's on Chattanooga. They they have been here. They expect to win when they are at this point in the season and in the tournament. And they may be the team that will tighten up. We'll just have to see. Five seconds on the shot clock. They've got all five players outside the free throw line. Now with one, they're not going to get it off. Jim Foster calls a timeout, and the string of turnovers continues three in a row. You see Jim Foster saying, go, go past them. And as you said, Jim Foster doesn't do a lot of actual coaching during the game. He does more adjusting and tweaking, but we may see him do some of his hardcore coaching here. Pick and pop for Rachel Self. It was a good look for Self that just didn't fall. Good luck and another good rebound for Jasmine Joyner. I like the way that Self's been able to come out to the baseline, drawing Joyner away from the basket. She's really made a living away from the basket on the offensive end. Yes. Both sides. Now she wants it down low. Self commits the foul, reaching around. That's now Self's third foul, so three Mercer players with three. Gardner going to get her out for a minute or two. I don't think we'll see her on the bench very long, though. She's she's done a fantastic job of containing Jasmine Joyner throughout the day. Nice inbound play, getting Kiana Gilbert that deep in the lane. It's easy for the sophomore to finish there. Mox have only played six players in this game. Their starters have accounted for all of their points. 
The Bears were carried for a large portion of this game, most of the game, by Kiki Calloway off the bench. Alex Williams was strong early on. She spins that one through. Nice move by Alex Williams to get underneath the Chattanooga defenders, use the entire rim. Thought it might even hang up on the back of the glass there. Jump ball, it's Mercer ball. Jump ball, possession here for Mercer. We saw this in another Chattanooga game. Same, same player, Alicia Payne, same spot. Let's see if she goes up trying to attack Rachel, or not Rachel Self, but Amanda Thompson. Who had just checked in for Self. Three turnovers and one basket for the Mox here in the fourth quarter. Ariana Gilbert isn't giving Kiki Calloway any space. Queen Alford the same. In fact, Chattanooga denying way out beyond the arc. Lawrence attacks and she draws the foul. This one's against Alicia Payne. Alicia Payne. We're seeing Mercer attacking the basket a little more, attacking the defense more, which is a difference. It's not just trying to get to the basket, but you're attacking the defense. It all goes back to confidence. The confidence to really go at the mocks and take that one step to beat them. And that confidence is built by the fact that they beat them earlier in the season. Thompson, Yeoman's work down there trying to front Jasmine Joyner. Forcing it back out to the perimeter. Eight on the shot clock. Deep three for Alicia Payne. And it seems that Chattanooga all of a sudden is unsure of itself. Not picking up in transition. Not looking to attack. And now we're at a three-point game. Mercer nipping at their heels. From 13 points down to three. Lawrence goes for the steal. It's last touch by Gilbert. For the first time today, the Bears have momentum and the Bears believe. And you can see in their body language, you can hear it in their fan base. And right here, nobody picking up Sydney Means. Why you would let that player in particular all alone. I think there's some miscommunication. I think this Chattanooga team's maybe a little head scratching right now. Thompson on the pick, rolls down, lost the dribble. Alicia Payne once again forcing that turnover. Quick hands by Payne. Payne, now she looks to attack. Contact underneath, and it's an offensive foul on the only senior on the floor. How about the guts of Sydney Means to step in, take the charge. She very well could have been her fourth. Looked like her heels were right on that arc, but nonetheless, Foul against Alicia Payne. A quarter eerily reminiscent of the third quarter in the semis if you're on the Chattanooga side of things. A big lead at the half, washed away in the third quarter. Jim Foster said afterwards he felt like they were tight, he felt like they played not to lose, and because of it lost the lead. Well, you certainly can't play that way if you're in the fourth quarter of the championship game. If you play not to lose, you're just opening the door for your opponent. Queen Alford had Broadway sliding back. Two players seal off Jasmine Joyner. Means has that bounce in her step back. She's got him within one. Jim Foster going to take another timeout. A 12-2 run for the Bears. Chattanooga's led the whole way. The Bears have never even been tied.
Here come the Bears. They've hit their last four shots, eight straight points for them. Uh, and it starts with the top two players on the team, Cindy Meade, who throughout the tournament has led the charge, and Kalia Lawrence, the player of the year, getting involved, making things happen on the defensive end, and the energy of the crowd behind them. Mercer isn't finished yet. The fairy tale continuing. Mercer has trucked a couple of busloads of fans from Macon, Georgia here. And they have made their presence felt all throughout this tournament and did again at that timeout. Here's this zone press again, this 1-3-1, and again a turnover by Chattanooga. Unbelievable. This Second straight turnover after a Jim Foster timeout. In a panic. And <laughs> very rarely would you see that. And again, it's, it's just panicking a little bit. Mercer does a good job of coming to the ball with hands up, forcing those high passes. Chattanooga would be better served to look like they're going to pass high and then go underneath. In search of their first lead of the day, Kalia Lawrence fading to her left. The Bears lead it by one. And we had talked about it. Darren, you brought it up. Who, who has the more, most pressure? It would be Chattanooga. They've been here 16 times with 16 wins. Can Another they go away turnover. with the 17th? Jim Foster trying everything to calm his girls down, but Kalia Lawrence and Sydney Means have other ideas. And Kalia Lawrence now, her mindset is look for those openings and score. She's taking the shots over defenders. She's a scorer, always looking for it. Alford comes away with the weak side rebound, pushes the tempo. Oh, Jasmine Joyner won the ball. She had a bit of a mismatch. Sydney Means the only one down low to protect. They're late rotating around, and Joyner does get it to give the Mox the lead back. 16 previous trips to the Southern Conference Tournament Championship game, 16 titles for the Mox. Second straight year, they're getting pushed. Lawrence along the baseline. Two contested tough shots for her. Lawrence perhaps trying to draw some contact, hoping for some contact. Players down for Mercer. Chattanooga missing an awesome opportunity to attack with numbers down. See, the players down, ball deflected out of bounds by Mercer. Gilbert around Thompson, has him back on top by three. Gilbert against three, so confident, so explosive when she wants to be. Mercer again with their smaller lineup. Rachel Self on the bench. Maybe smaller, but it's quick. Look for him to try to find those opportunities to get to the basket. Thompson wanted it on the inside. Instead, Williams drives into Joyner, and they got a foul on Joyner. Uh, it's a mismatch in terms of foot speed. Joyner does a decent job of keeping up with Williams, but some contact at the end with the lower body. Sophomore from College Park, Georgia. Misses a pair at the line. We've seen this Chattanooga team time and again in the tournament in tough situations. Coming out on top, see if they have enough to do it here. Extra pass to Queen Alford, alone in the corner. Ariana Gilbert with the rebound, lost it onto the floor. We got a jump ball, and it's Chattanooga ball. 
cannot be casual with the ball around Mercer. And that's what happened there off of this rebound. Ariana Gilbert had it, but she just casually thought she'd have some space. Mercer is chasing it down. They're tracking it. They're trying to force turnovers, trying to shake that ball loose. Joyner begging for it on the inside. The Mox missed her. Again, the extra pass into the corner. This time, Queen Alford able to hit. A six-point lead. The Mox have answered the Bears' run, and the Bears' only lead with seven straight points. That tough defense. Keanu Gilbert getting a hand stuck in. Collusion mid-floor. Sydney Means is still down. Two Bears went down hard. Lawrence remains down on the floor. Her own man trying to recover through is a great extra pass by Alicia Payne. And then Keanu Gilbert off the steal. Misses, but a nice follow. And that's what you would always hope that you have somebody trailing right behind to get that rebound. Mercer needs a timeout. The Mox have scored nine straight. The wheels were coming off. And then things steadied down and it started on the defensive end of the floor. And I think a lot of that has to do, Lawrence forced a couple of shots on back-to-back -back possessions. Neither of them went down. And that's kind of what keyed this Mox run. And when the Mox have had to bring the ball up after a score, Mercer score, Mercer's been able to set that Half court, three quarter court, one three one. They've had their hands up. They forced turnovers on the missed shots. Chattanooga is able to get out in a running situation. They've been able to flatten the defense out, and that's why offensively they've been able to generate points. Alicia Payne, Jasmine Joyner, Kiana Gilbert. They were a key part of the team last year that was pushed to the very end in the championship game before escaping with their 16th tournament title. In and again, Yeah. And again, they're the integral parts here that are keeping them alive here. Uh, Ariana Gilbert trying to defend Sydney Means, falls down. Mindy, Sydney Means taking the shot, getting some contact underneath. Gets to go to the free throw line. Me, Gilbert, getting tripped up by Rachel Self. <laughs> Second best free throw shooter in the Southern Conference here, Means. Well, you know on the make, you're going to see that pressure defense. We may even see it's extended some. Watching Alicia Payne saying, box out. <laughs> Got to get this board, which they do. Joyner is fouled. Interesting that the Bears, who have relied so much on their freshmen this year, down the stretch, and right now, they don't have a freshman on the floor. Taking the ball out of bounds. Just the second foul in this quarter by Mercer, allowing them again to extend the floor. Kalia Lawrence felt like they maybe had the tie up, and that's what they were going for. Still two more fouls before Chattanooga is shooting, so Mercer can continue to be aggressive, go for steals. They can, but it also benefits Chattanooga in that every time the clock stops and then they get the ball back in, a few more seconds wind off, those precious 46 seconds left. Means commits that one, it's her fourth. I think that Susie Gardner would put somebody else in to do the fouling. Got Means with four. You've got Lawrence with three. You've got Alex Williams with four. She's just done that. Sean Kitchens, who has played very sparingly, tackles Alicia Payne. Well, Jasmine Joyner was down here as a safety valve, but Payne curling off the front of the setup, the pass over the top. And you can see it here as that ball goes up, the little shove at the end. 
Had that contact not been made, the ball was going Mercer's direction. Well documented, only senior for Chattanooga. They've made it a point that this year is about Alicia Payne getting her back to the tournament. Somewhat fitting she's at the line here. Susie Gardner is trying to get a substitute into the game. She's trying to get Sydney Means in. What happened was Means had gone in, but the officials hadn't cleared her to go in yet, so then they pulled her off the floor. Wait till the second shot. And all the confusion makes Alicia Payne think about it and miss the second. And she was perfect up to that point. Five for five, now five of six from the free throw line. Lawrence is short. Williams has the board. Approaching 30 seconds to play, she traveled. Ariana Gilbert was there initially, then really just let her go by. I think that Williams was surprised she was that open and shuffled her feet on that move to the basket. Arsenal again extending the floor defensively, just hoping for another turnover. Payne shakes free of a defender, works more time off the clock, and then the foul comes with 27.6 left. Lawrence now has four. Alicia Payne, such, such a steady player throughout this tough time. She's able to avoid Broadway, get hustles down the floor. Leah Lawrence having a chaser. Again, the senior feeling it a little bit. One second ago, she points to her head, and you could read her lips, I'm trying, in response to another encouragement from the bench. Very simple, just make it. And we saw Jim Foster in the semifinal game do the same thing. Will you just make a shot? And they have such a great relationship, you can tell that. In fact, when she turned back from the bench, there's a little smile on her face, knowing that that encouragement from Jim Foster is exactly what she needed to have. Top two seeds here. They were the regular season co-champs. Mercer was pushed by Furman before pulling away. Chattanooga had a large lead in their semi. Sanford came charging at him in the third. And then Chattanooga pulled away in the fourth, very similar to how Mercer came charging at Chattanooga here in this championship game in the fourth. And as soon as the Mox relinquished the lead, they went back on the offensive, went on a 9 nothing run. And the Mox stand 27 seconds away from their fourth straight trip to the NCAA tournament. Darren, what's so hard about playing Chattanooga in the finals, and you and I have talked about it throughout the weekend, is that they expect to win. And when they get in this final game, they even if the chips start falling, they come right back mentally tough. Jim Foster gives them just the instruction they need, and they seem to get away with it. Mercer not quite finished yet. Cindy Means still trying to work her way in, gets another shot to fall. Does a great job of eluding defenders. Chattanooga trying not to foul. Virtually just giving it to her, but contesting a little. Down just seven points. If they can get a turnover or two, Mercer can continue to try to attack the basket. First, it's got to start with their defense. Turnover or two or a missed free throw or two. It could keep the Bears in the game. Still just dealing with 19.7 seconds left. And the Mox coached by a Hall of Famer in Jim Foster. Susie Gardner is the coach of the year in the Southern Conference, whose team has come up with a couple of miraculous finishes this year. They came all the way back from 13 points down. The 
support for the Bears has been incredible, not just here in Asheville, but in Hawkins Arena, their home floor. Kickstarted their season, a 12-win regular season at home. on the floor for Mercer. Payne, Gilbert, the ball movement preventing a quick foul, so five seconds run off the clock. Lawrence and Means on the bench for Mercer during the defensive stance, coming back in for offense, both with four fouls. Alford has been nearly perfect at the line in this tournament. She's missed two today. If Chattanooga holds on to win, it'll be tough to figure out which of those five starters is going to get the MVP award. Is it Payne, is it the senior, is it Joyner, who came three blocks away from a tournament record and who today has another double-double, her second in a row? Self trails the play. That's off the mark in what is probably the final gasp for the Bears. Oh, that's the Rosendahl putting up three in a row. Chattanooga has won it. They've held off the Bears. They've won their fourth straight Southern Conference Tournament Championship, and they're on to their fourth straight trip to the NCAA.